in the last five or six chapters, we talked about different types of sense organs that exist. Remember, these sense organs were there to be able to pick up stimuli. And the ones we talked about specifically were the eye and the ear. As the eye was responsible for picking up vision or a light stimuli. So that was light stimuli. And then the actual ear, which we talked about as well, was responsible for picking up sound and it was useful for hearing and it was responsible for picking up sound energy, right? So we had talked about these different types of sense organs and how they help us pick up either light for vision or sound for hearing. But we haven't talked about yet the brain itself, which is obviously also responsible for both vision and hearing because whilst the eye and the ear detect vision and hearing respectively, we still need to be able to bring that message to the brain for interpretation. So brain is the, the brain is basically the organ for actual seeing and hearing, right? So the brain actually allows us to see and hear because without the brain, we wouldn't be able to actually interpret the message that's picked up by the eye and the ear. So the brain has different parts and we need to discuss these different parts over the next three videos. The next couple of videos are pretty much straightforward. All we have to do is really identify different parts and say what they are used for. In terms of the actual brainstem, cerebellum, and cerebrum. These are the different parts. The cerebrum is the biggest part. It's basically the vast majority of the brain is cerebrum, and it's put into four different categories, the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. I might have mis said or said one of these words incorrectly. If so, my apologies. These are the, the, these are the parts of the cerebrum. And then the cerebellum is on the bottom here. It's like a little part that just pops out on the bottom. And then we've got the brainstem or the medulla oblongata, which is right here. This is the medulla oblongata. And I'll quickly go over some of the functions. The medulla oblongata, which is this part here, the brainstem. So the medulla oblongata. This is responsible, for example, for temperature control. Temperature control and also breathing. So this part of the brain allows us to, to temperature control and breathing. And also, it makes sure that signals that get sent from any part of the actual body get sent to the brain. They go for the brainstem and then eventually end up in the brain. So the medulla oblongata is just a different word for the brainstem. And we've also got the cerebrum, which is again that lower part down here. That's the cerebrum. Oh, sorry, that's the cerebellum. We're talking about cerebellum at the moment. So the cerebellum was responsible, for example, for muscle coordination. So the reason why you can walk and um, why you know what to do when you play tennis if you've played it for a while. All these would be examples of muscle coordination. Then also we, it's responsible for posture. So that's if you have a good posture, which I'm trying to have at the moment, but uh, yeah, I'm sure you have a decent posture at the moment. So that's posture, it's just you sitting upright and doing everything else um, in a good posture, so standing and sitting. And then it also is responsible for balance. So these three parts are the main responsibilities for the cerebellum. And then the cerebrum, was, again, the cerebrum was the vast majority of it. So this is where we have our logic, our thinking, especially the frontal part is where that happens. And this is where our hearing happens as well. Our sight happens. And I could go on and on. It's quite a few things happen in the cere cerebrum. All right, but this top one talks specifically about which parts of the brain are responsible for the detection of light and sound. Because top point says identify, which means name. Name those areas of the cerebrum. So again, the cerebrum is that top part, the biggest part, which is put into four sections. So identify those areas of the cerebrum involved in the perception and interpretation of light and sound. So basically, where do we pick up and interpret light and sound? And that's what we're going to cover now. So again, these four lobes, this is just, all this is just the actual cerebrum. So now I have, I have removed the uh, medulla oblongata and the cerebellum. This is just the cerebrum. And you can see this, there are these four lobes. There is the occipital lobe, the temporal lobe, the frontal lobe, and the parietal lobe. Um, the frontal lobe is obviously, this would be a front of your face, just in front of your brain, not your face. Um, this would be the front, and this would be the back of your head skull. And this would be the top, and this would be the bottom. So that should be fair, fairly straightforward enough. Right, so what's responsible for the detection of light? So which part, which area 
of the brain, and that's the frontal, sorry, not the frontal lobe, um, the temporal lobe. So, did I say light? Or, yeah, I said, I said um, light. So, light is actually vision, it's not the temporal lobe. Light is vision, and that happens at the occipital lobe. So, the occipital lobe, that's where our visual cortex is. So, f for the interpretation of light, that happens at the visual cortex and the visual cortex is part of the occupital lobe. So that's what you should know for this, for light. And for sound, sound is going to be the auditory cortex. So visual cortex makes sense, that's for vision. And auditory cortex makes sense, that's for sound. Auditory means kind of hearing. So sound is interpreted at the auditory cortex. And look where that is, that's on the temporal lobe, so we can find the actual auditory cortex on the temporal lobe. So that's kind of what you need to know for that dot point, that's basically it. The other stuff that I mentioned is still important, you should actually know that as well, because it's going to be covered in the next dot point. But for this specific dot point, it's just this part and this part. And there's just a couple of diagrams again. Um, we have our eye, remember the eye is where we detect. More specifically, we detect that the retina, which is the back of the eye. Then that um, all those retinas eventually send their signal onto the optic nerve. And the optic nerve will meet at the brain. And then you have these fibers, these neurons, which will meet up at the visual cortex. Remember, the visual cortex was the occupital, occupital part of the brain, the back of the brain. And the case of the eye, it's actually interesting, every eye has these two neurons, or has quite a few different optic nerve fibers come out. You can see the left part of the brain actually connects both to the left and the right eye, and the right side of the brain connects also to the left and the right eye. So they actually converge, you can see they're connecting to both eyes, which means that each eye, each part of the brain, sees slightly different sections. They both see so the left and the right side of the brain, so the left and the right side of the occipital lobe, both see what the left and right eye sees, but they see a slightly different version of it. But they both do have, they, they, they cross over, more or less. Um, again, I don't think it's too important for the top one, just gave some random information. And for hearing, remember hearing happened in the auditory cortex, which was part of the temporal lobe. This is the temporal lobe, which you can find on your side. And this is the hearing and auditory cortex. Now when it comes to hearing, we have every eye, not the eye, every ear. So the left ear would be connected to the right side of the brain, and the right ear would be connected to the left side of the brain. And that's in many cases um, the case. In many cases, our left side of our body is controlled by our right side of the brain, and our right side of the body is controlled by our left side of the brain. But at the same time, there's been quite a few studies recently that have shown that there that it's not a complete split. Right? The left side doesn't completely take care of the right, and the right doesn't completely take care of the left. There is some crossing over as well. There's some other parts which left also helps with certain parts of the left side of the, of the body. The right side of the brain also helps with other parts of, that happen to the right side of the body. Right? So there's some crossing over when it comes to brain function. The first stop point is know that light is detected by or sent to the visual cortex, which is in the occipital lobe, and sound is sent to the auditory cortex which is in the temporal lobe. But I hope that was useful.